Welcome guys, today we'll be remaking this scene from the Matrix, completely free of Blender and DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's just get started and jump in. To make Neo, I used a script called PyFood, which I'll link down below. Basically it generates a 3D model from an image, which, which saved me a lot of time when it came to sculpting Neo. To make sure the image of Neo that I uploaded worked and didn't make a 3D model of the background that he was on, I put the image into a free image manipulation program called GIMP and made the background transparent. Once it had finished generating, I imported the model into Blender and started sculpting the model by using the grab tool to morph it into looking more like Neo and using the play strips brush to add his straps around his arms and legs. Next, I added a circle into my scene and used proportional editing to bend it into looking like Neo's sunglasses, whilst also using the mirror modifier. I used PyFood again to generate the 3D model of Agent Thompson by feeding it an image of Agent Smith and then importing it into Blender and using the grab and clay strips brushes again to make it look more like Agent Thompson. I added a cube into the scene and extruded out some edges to make it look like the building that he was standing on. I didn't have much time so I knew I wasn't going to be able to model the helicopter so I downloaded this really great free model from Sketchfab that I'll link down below. For the rest of the buildings, I used the ones I made in the render I did for Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse to save some time. It wouldn't matter too much since they were in the background. To make Neo's trench coat, I used a cube and molded it into the basic shapes of his coat, and then I subdivided it. For the agent's gun, I just used a cube and extruded it out basically doing the 3D version of tracing until it looked good enough. To be able to animate Neo, I first had to rig him. To do this, I uploaded him to Mixmo and used the auto rigger. I then re-downloaded him. I'm not the best at hand animation, so I cheated by using a video to animation data tool called Plask.ai. It's online and it's free and I'll leave a link down below. All I did was record a video of myself falling down like Neo does, and then I uploaded that to Plask. I then downloaded the model of Neo with the animation. To make Neo's hair, I used Blender's new hair tool. To use it, I added an empty hair and used the add brush to cover Neo's head. I then shrank all the hairs to their smallest level, and used the comb tool to brush Neo's hair into place. Make sure to have reference in your scene so you can get a more accurate result. Texturing Neo just involved going into sculpt mode and using the paintbrush to paint the base colours. I then used a darker brush of each colour to break up the uniformity of it. To make sure the textures show up in the render, I plugged in a colour attribute node into its base colour. I then left all the other settings and just increased the roughness to about 0.7. Make sure to remember to paint on the eyebrows as well. I find it's a common mistake I keep making. For his glasses, I just made them black with a little roughness. Behind Neo, there's a patch of white smoke. I didn't want to simulate it as it would take too long, so I made it procedurally by using a gradient texture set to a quadratic sphere, and plugging it into the density of a principal volume node, and I multiplied it with a noise texture. This creates a smoke puff look, and the quadratic sphere is used so that the smoke is not the, ed the edge of the cube, which would leave a harsh edge. The shot also has some stylized bullet trails in it. To make them, I used a proportional editing on Sphere and added an array modifier to it. I then textured it by mixing a transparent and translucent shader together and mixing that with a refraction BSDF and using a wave texture as the factor. For the bullets themselves, I made them very smooth and set the mouthness to 1. For the buildings, I replaced the textures that were already on them from the Spider-Verse render with a new one. I used a Voronoi texture to shed to the Chevy Chev mode to give the impression of windows by plugging that into the colour, roughness and normal inputs. I then textured the agent for the same process I used for Neo. However, I found that his skin came out too pale. 
So I used a separate color node to separate the red channel from the color attribute. And then I used a math node to add to it, which basically increases the saturation of just the reds. The animation I downloaded from Flask wasn't quite accurate, so I spent a few hours tweaking the arms and legs so it flowed better. To get the iconic camera swirling effect, I added a curve into my scene and then I edited it into acting as a path that the camera would take. I then added a follow path tool to the camera and animated the offset value. I also animated the rotation of the camera for a couple of key frames, no pun intended. To finish off the animation, I animated the bullets by adding two keyframes for each and then parroting the bullet trail to each bullet. I then animated the array value of the bullet trail so it looked like it was actually creating a trail instead of just dragging one around. The final step in Blender was then simulating the cloth around Neo. This took multiple hours but eventually I got a good result with quality steps of 20, weight of 0.8 kg and speed multiplier of 0.3. To make it easier to simulate, I duplicated Neo and then applied a decimate modifier to him and used that as the collision. Also added two wind forces to my scene to help it flow better. For the lighting, I used a cube with an emission shader around the outside of my scene. I then duplicated this cube and scaled it up. I replaced the emission with a volume. For the lighting, I use a cube with an emission shader around the outside of my scene. I then duplicated this cube and scaled it up. I replaced the emission with a volume scatter node set to 0.002. Then I rendered that out and headed into compositing. For the compositing, I imported the render into DaVinci Resolve and added some film grain to it. Then I color corrected it by tinting it with a bit more yellow, and with that, I give you the final result. It could definitely be improved, but I did the best I could in the time I had. Anyways, thank you so much for watching guys, and if you enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and liked. And if you have any suggestions for any other cinematic scenes, or how I could improve this shot, please leave them down in the comments below. And I'll let you get on with the rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next one.